Hi guys, so just to recap what we did today, I'm just going to go through example 3 very briefly. Okay, so remember we had that the revenue function was 10x minus a third x squared and my cost function was 2x plus 36. Now, the first thing was to work out what happens at break even. So remember that at break even, we have that my profit is equal to zero. And remember the profit is the difference between revenue and cost. So this is what needs to happen at break even. So I need to solve for if I equate this 10x minus a third x squared is equal to 2x plus 36. Once I group all the terms I get a third x squared minus 8x plus 36 is equal to 0. Right, now I'm just going to times all of this by 3 right, so that I can make the leading term here so I can make that leading term 1. So if I do that, I get x squared minus 3 times 8, which is 24. And 36 times 3, which is 108. And that's equal to 0. And this is a quadratic equation that I can solve using the quadratic formula. Or I can use this method where I find the factors of 18 sorry, of 108, right? And in so doing, I find that the two factors of 108 that give me a negative 24 is x minus 6 and x minus 18, right? So what this means then is that x is equal to 6 or x is equal to, and that all is important, or x is equal to 18. And remember in class I said if I had a negative value as one of my x's, that is not bubble. Okay, now I'm just going to show you then what the purpose of doing this was. So remember that these quantities of 6 and 18 are the two quantities that uh, happen or that allow break even to happen, I should say. So remember my profit function is the difference between my revenue, which is 10x minus a third x squared minus my cost, which is 2x minus sorry, plus 36, and then if I just multiply that out, that is what my profit function looks like. Now what I need to do is check that, in actual fact, those two quantities give me break-even. So if I substitute 6 in there, so that's minus a third uh, by 6 squared plus 8 by 6 minus 36. I'll get a 0. I'm just going to verify that quickly. So minus 1 over 3 multiplied by 6. And you can do this as well while I'm doing it. Right? And indeed, b of 6 is equal to 0. And I can check the same for 18. And doing that for 18, I again get that my profit is equal to zero. So those two quantities do give me a profit or do give me a break even. So that's that. The next step then is, remember I asked you to draw the next question, rather in example three, was uh, to sketch the graphs of the, of the revenue and cost functions. Now this is important. I think this is where a lot of you might have lost in the lecture. So I'm going to do the revenue. I'm going to first um, do everything systematically. So my revenue function is 10x minus a third x squared. So the first thing is to find the x-intercepts. So remember in class I wrote this as 10 minus a third minus a third x multiplied by x because if we just recall remember I said that my revenue function is my price multiplied by my 
quantity. And so if this is 10 minus third, a third x, then that relates to my price. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do then is I am going to work out what my x intercept is. Now to remember my x intercept occurs when y is equal to 0. So my x intercept occurs when r is equal to 0, basically. So what that implies then is that 10 minus a third x multiplied by x is equal to 0. Now this is only equal to 0 if either x is equal to 0 or the other time it happens is if 10 minus a third x is equal to 0. And if 10 minus a third x is equal to 0, 10 is equal to a third x, and x is equal to 30. Those are, th those are my x-intercepts. My y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. And if I put x equal to 0 in r, then r is equal to 0. So that's where my x-intercept is. Right? And I did this already in class. My mistake, sorry, the y-intercept is when r is equal to 0. Right? So that's, uh, we also mentioned that in class, and that relates to this in fact. Right? I can get that from there. Okay, and then this is the most important thing, and I think this is where some of you might have been confused. When I'm trying to sketch a parabola, I need to know what the turning point is. Okay, so my turning point occurs when x is equal to minus b over 2a. So in this example, that's my a and that's my b. So this is minus 10 over 2 times minus a third, right? And that gives me 15. Right? But that's just the quantity. If I want to find the corresponding revenue, uh, what the corresponding uh, value is for the revenue, I need to substitute in the revenue function. So R, the revenue, when I produce 15 units, is actually 70. And you can verify that calculation. Sorry, it's not 70, but it is 75. Okay, so that's for my revenue. Now, my cost is not difficult. The cost should have taken long. So I'm just going to do the cost here. Right, so my cost, remember C of X was equal to 2X plus 36. So my Y intercept, or let's not use Y intercept. Let's call it what we were calling it. My C intercept occurs when x is equal to 0, right? And when x is equal to 0, c is equal to, so c of 0 is equal to 36. My x-intercept occurs when c is equal to 0. When c is equal to 0, it means that 2x plus 36 is equal to 0. But I don't need to do this. So remember in class I said that I don't produce negative units, right? So I only need to know the value at 0. And I know that the value at 0 is 36, right? So what I did in class, I'm just going to erase this now. Right? This is what you have normally have done. But because I know that I can't produce negative units, that's going to take me in the wrong quadrant. So remember, I know that the um, highest quantity for this question is actually 30. So at x equal to 30, my cost at 30 is equal to 96. So these are the only two points now. These are the only two points now that I need to draw the straight line graph, right? And in order to draw um, the uh, revenue function, which is a quadratic function, I need this, I need this, I need this, and I need those two things there. Okay, so in the next, I'm quickly going to draw a sketch of this. And I've done this in class already, but I'm just going to redo it, just for explanation purposes. 
so remember I'm drawing it on the same set of axes. So here is both my revenue and my cost. My x-intercept is just my quantity. Okay, so remember my straight line graph started at, at when uh, x was equal to zero, my cost was 36. Right? And when x was equal to 30, my cost was 96. So that's what my cost function looks like. Then my revenue function, um, at x equal to zero, my revenue was equal to zero. At x equal to 30, my revenue was equal to zero. And my turning point happened at 15, and that corresponded to a value of 75 for the revenue. And so this is just a very rough sketch. But that's now what my revenue function looks like. And as I mentioned in class, I've got three regions here. There's a region of profit there where my revenue uh, exceeds my cost. Right? Remember these two points. Well, bef let, me, let me finish this. There's a loss there because at this point, my cost exceeds my revenue. And there's a loss in that region as well. And so that's also a loss because here again, my cost exceeds my revenue. Alright, and let's not forget about two important points. Right, remember these two important points that we worked out here. Right, when x was equal to 6 and when x was equal to 18, I'm at break even. And you could substitute that x equal to 6 and 18 in either the cost or the revenue functions to get the corresponding y-intercept. But that's basically it when it comes to uh, assessing the revenue, uh, cost, and profit model. So this was the one type of model that we looked at, and tomorrow I will continue with example two and um, the exponential growth in decay. Anyway, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.